Hey guys, this is Henry from Albedi again. Today we're going to keep working on the basic um, hardware configurations that you want to make sure that you have properly set before start to working in Pro Tools. Today we're going to start with the playback engine, how to configure your playback engine. So this is something that you want to make sure that you familiarize yourself with because you're going to be doing this a lot, okay? You might... Um, you might have found yourself in a situation in which, let's say you have an interface, you have it connected and everything, it seems to be working fine, and then when you open Pro Tools, instead of listening to the audio coming out of your interface, audio is actually coming out of the laptop speakers. Well, that's a clear symptom that your playback engine is not set up correctly. So we're going to fix that now. We're going to show you how to do it. And... Here we go. So if you go to your top menu bar in Pro Tools, you can find there's a menu called Setup. Then you can go to Playback Engine. When you click there, the Playback Engine window will appear. So the first thing you want to make sure, here is a drop down list next to Playback Engine. If you click there, you can set your Playback Engine. Supposing that you were in that situation in which your interface was connected and it was on, but still you were listening to audio coming out of the laptop speakers, that probably tells you that built-in output was selected instead of your interface. In my case, I have a universal audio Thunderbolt interface, so that's the one that I want to make sure it's selected. Okay, uh, actually I don't have to change anything because it's already selected, so... Uh, but when you change it, this, um, this screen will show up and it tells you that when you change your playback engine, you have to save and close the session, you're going to press yes, and it'll close and, and reopen it. But since I'm not changing anything, I don't have to do that, okay? Universal Audio Thunderbolt. Now, um, you have your buffer size. Okay, so buffer. This is crucial. This is something you need to understand. So, you have all these options. In my case, I can go all the way from 32 samples to 1024. So why is this important? Well, as a rule of thumb, if you're recording, if you're only recording, okay, you're capturing audio, you're tracking, you want to make sure that your samples are low. Why? When you have low buffer size, you have less latency. You don't want to have latency when you're recording because it'll be impossible. Now, when it, it'll be impossible to record, you don't want to, you don't want to be yourself. You want, you don't want to put yourself in a situation in which, um, let's say you're playing a guitar and let's say you strum a chord and then you listen to the chord, you know, half a second or one second after that. That's that's not good. So when you're recording, you want to make sure that you select low samples or low buffer size. Now, when you're mixing, you're gonna want to have high buffer size. Why? Because your plugins need this buffer, this high buffer size in order to process audio. So let's suppose that our, we're mixing on this session. I'll just leave it as 512. If by some reason I feel like my session is getting slower because I'm adding too many plugins, I'm I'll just switch it to 1024. Okay. Now host engine, you have an option here that says ignore errors during playback and record. So, if you are, let's say, using a lot of virtual instruments, you are composing, you're arranging, you're producing, okay? In that case, you do want to have this on because when you have a lot of play, a lot of virtual instruments, you might have errors during playback, but you want to ignore them. You don't want the session to stop because of that because, as I said, you're, you're testing different virtual instruments and things like that, so you might want to have that on. Now, if you're mixing... You don't want to ignore errors during playback, so you want you want to have that off uh, when mixing. Now, dynamic plugin processing, I recommend you to have that always on. Um, if you can process your plugins dynamically, that's better. That means that the plugin is going to be using your CPU resources only when audio passes through them, which is you know the smartest way to do it. You also have your video engine. Uh, you'll enable the video engine. Supposing that you have any video, if not, there's no reason having your video engine on. And lastly, you have your cache size, which we're going to leave to normal, which is default. So that's how you configure your playback engine. If you press OK, the changes are being saved, they are applied, and we should be good to go um, 
And we can now, after you set up your playback engine, we can set up our inputs and outputs configurations, or how Pro Tools calls it, the I.O. We're going to do that on the next tutorial, okay? Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.